Hey friends, Svelte is changing how he does reactivity. Today I'm going to go through the changes with you and talk about Svelte runes or signals. So I'm going to show you why they're so awesome and how Svelte is going to be even simpler and more performant out of the box. So I hope you're excited as I am and before I get started don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also support me by becoming a patron. So Svelte just announced today runes which you can look at here. All the links are going to be in the description so you can have a look at that if you want. So let's really talk about the current problems in Svelte. So currently Svelte has two reactive systems. Reactive assignments is the core of Svelte. So for example here we have account and then we can increment it and basically just by using an assignment it's going to update reactively. And that's it. But now we can also have reactive statements for the right value so we can compute the double like this and everything works great. You have reactive declarations you have reactive statements, so you can say console log double, each time double updates is going to console log it out. Then you also have reactive statements, so for example you can track a value, if double is higher than 9000, you can get an alert, it's over 9000. But there's a problem with this, Svelte's reactivity system only works at the top level of components. And what does that mean? Well basically here in this example I have this piece of code and I want to reuse it, so how do I do that? And maybe you try doing something like this, so you create a function create counter, and now count is no longer reactive and the reactive declaration has no effect and you even get a warning in your editor because these variables can only be declared at the top level of your Svelte component. So right now if you want reactivity outside Svelte components you have to use a custom Svelte store and Svelte stores are amazing and one of my favorite features of Svelte. So let's look at how stores work. So stores can be used anywhere. In this example I'm inside of account.js file, I'm importing a writable from Svelte store now I'm creating a function create store so we can pass it any value we want which is the initial value. Now from the writable we can destructure a subscribe set update and to create a custom store the only requirement is that you return the subscribe method. That's how you make a custom Svelte store. And how easy is this friends? So now in the return statement we return subscribe. So now for incrementing it we can use the update method and now we can update the count. Same for the double method we use update and for the reset we can use set and set it to zero. And this is really great, but now we have to export this. So now we have another system of reactivity. Now inside your cell component, you import it here. And here we're initializing count because if you create multiple components, they're going to share the same store. So now in each of your components, if you create this count, is going to be separate. So now we can use count increment and log out the count value, which is going to get updated reactively. And here we can reset the count value. And this is really great, but what if you had a universal reactive system? So how would that look like? Well, it would look like signals. And Svelte runes are basically just signals, but they have a unique name so they're not confusing to people. So let's look at how this works. So here we have a classic example where we have a count and a double reactive declaration. So let's see how this looks with runes. So we have a couple of runes. First we can replace count with the dollar sign state rune. And of course this looks more verbose at first, but you're going to see the benefits quickly. So this is going to also help the compiler know to track the dependencies. So let's see how we can replace our reactive declarations. Before we had to say double equals count times two, now we have a special rune or signal which is going to be dollar sign derived and then we can pass count times two. And how beautiful is this friends? So now you can put this inside of any other file just like a swell store, so you don't need stores anymore. Here we're inside a random file, let's pretend we have this create counter function, so we have count, then we have double, same as before, but you're going to see there's a problem. So if you return it right now, we can return count, double and increment, there's going to be a problem. We can create a counter like this, same as we did before, but now if you try to increment, it's going to work behind the scenes, but it's not going to log the value of count. And why is that? Well, before we talk about Svelte, this is another beautiful feature of Svelte. Svelte teaches you JavaScript. And this is just a regular function in JavaScript. So this has nothing to do with Svelte. This is just how JavaScript works. We're going to create a function create counter and inside we have this closure which is just a value inside of a function that remembers its value so we can invoke it and it's going to remember it. So this is a closure basically. And now we're also returning count increment so we can create count, create counter, but you're going to see a problem which we also had with Svelte, right? Because it's just JavaScript. So if we say counter.increment, it should be one. But if you console log counter.count is going to be zero. Hmm, that's strange. So if you do it again, counter.increment, it's going to be two, but if you console log the value of counter.count, it's going to be zero. 
And why is that? Well, it's just JavaScript. Because when you use count, it's going to be the same value as the value when you initialize the function. All right, so how can we fix that, right? Well, we can replace count with a getter. And getters and setters are just something that you can define on an object in JavaScript. So you can just, for example, say get count, and then you can return a count. So now anytime we can access count as a value. So let's see how that looks like. So now counter is going to be one, and when you log it out, counter count is going to be one. So now if you increment it again, it's going to be two. And how beautiful is this, friends? All right, so now we're back into Swell. As you can see, there isn't a lot of difference. So now we can update this piece of code. Now we can use a getter for the count. We can return the count. We can even use a setter for the count. So we pass in the value and then we can set the count to the value. And then we're also going to use a getter for double. So we can return the double value. So let's see how that looks like in action. So we create again this counter with create counter. And now inside of your code, how beautiful is this? You can just say counter increment and now it's going to reactively update. And same as for resetting the count because we set a setter. How beautiful is this, friends? But there's another problem with the current reactive system in Swell. If we look at this piece of code where we have double, double count, might have tried something like this where you passed a function to a reactive declaration, but Swell has no idea about this, right? So we have a double count here, then we have double count function, but Svelte can't track this dependency for you as it is now. So you might have done something ugly in the past. If you never done this before, close your eyes. So you could have done something like this just so that Svelte knows that count is a dependency and to rerun this line of code. So this is kind of weird, right? And unpredictable. And you have to know all of these little tricks, even though Svelte is great as it is right now, but you can run into some of these weird problems. But now instead, using runes, you can use the arrived, and now you can pass the function directly. And because this is a signal, under the hood, Svelte is able to track it. So now you can say double count, and Svelte is able to track the dependency. This is going to update as intended. So let's talk about effects lastly. And what are effects? Well, effect is a rune, and it only runs in the browser after the DOM has been updated, like on mount. It replaces lifecycle functions, and you don't have to track any dependencies. And I'm saying this as a warning because your first instinct reaction is going to be, this looks like React, but it's not like React because you don't have to do that awful dependency tracking, and it doesn't have the same foot guns as React. So let's look at effects. So this is an effect. So when you want something to happen, to something changing, like the dollar sign colon before, you can say dollar sign effect, and now you can run something after the DOM updates inside of this effect. So we can log out count, same as you did before, right? And then you can also return a cleanup function. So when the component unmounts, you can do whatever you need. You can also do something that you weren't able to do before. So here I'm using the state rune, and now inside of our effect, if count is lower than 69, and each time we update the value of count, this is going to run, so it's going to get output from 0 to 69 else is going to log out nice. And then you can also nest effects if you want. So you can have nested effects. And basically that's it. There's a lot more, but I'm going to include all of the links in the description. So let me know what you think about the changes and just try it out for a bit and you're going to see you're going to love it. So don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also support me by becoming a patron. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.